CJ Peterson, and welcome to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their heart. Today, we're going to attempt something new. We're going to be doing the first panel. I chose to do a panel because of the subject, which is cosplay. So I have three individuals here who I consider to be very good cosplayers, and they're also friends as well. First one I have is Paul T. Watson from Path Star Trek Pathfinder. I also have Cassie Legrand for Mermaid Cosplay and William Dyenbeck from Will the Alien Cosplay. Thank you guys for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, glad to be here. In honor of it, for those who can see, um, for those who can't, I'm wearing my property of Starfleet shirt. So I have my fandom going. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm also part of the ST Pathfinder crew. Um, I play the chief of security. So we're gonna start with talking to each of you guys about different things. We're gonna start with Paul. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what got you started into your cosplay journey? Well, bottom line is uh, I was a huge fan of Star Trek and that was about the only thing that was that engaged me as a child. So I ended up going to my first convention way back in 1972, I believe. And that was my first attempt at cosplay with an iron-on Starfleet patch on a red t-shirt. And I saw other people who were in costume, so to speak, that made their own props. And I became fascinated with props and the whole behind the scenes and started talking to the actors who would show up. And I, I just got really interested in that. Of course, life happened. I grew up, had a job, had kids, all that. And then later, years back, I wanted to get back into my fandom and started attending conventions and did my first cosplay or first cosplay as adult and as a red shirt, Star Trek original series red shirt. Oh no, a red shirt? Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know. I like red. I mean, well, That's canon. As, as, the year, as the years went by, I started seeing things about cosplay that I really liked and one of them was just mostly the fellowship among other cosplayers and talking about your fandom. And I've, I have other fandoms, of course, but Star Trek was always my core one. And I like taking photos. And one day after a photo shoot I did with a, a group here in Texas, I made a little comedic skit out of it using memes. Then I started thinking, well, why not do something like that and put an actual fan-based uh, production into it? Mm -hmm. So I talked to a few people and uh, actually my very first uh, partner in it was Will here on this interview and then before we knew it we had a core team we I had Will as my first officer um, and then uh, Sophia Cast is our chief engineer and then obviously you CJ is our chief of security and that basically formed our core team our core creative team for Star Trek Pathfinder but again, what I enjoyed about cosplay, again, was the being able to do the photo shoots, being able to act. And I thought, why not do this in a team environment instead of just being one cosplayer standing alone by themselves mm -hmm. and promoting only their cosplay? I'd rather bring in multiple cosplayers, have them act in the meme episodes, and then promote each of their own separate cosplays. But then when we come together, come together as a group, it was a much more powerful synergy. And... So that, that's kind of the journey I went through. But honestly, it all goes back to being a huge fan of uh, the whole Star Trek franchise and uh, doing my best to honor it and stick to uh, Gene Roddenberry, the great bird of the galaxy's whole quest for that, you know, we can all live together in harmony as a, as a human race and, and make great advances. And I, I think that's one of the, that's something that I've seen underlying the cosplay community because everybody from different backgrounds comes together and they're respectful to each other. They, they, they interact, they build strong friendships. And I thought, what better model to put into a cosplay community than, than the United Federation of Planets and Starfleet and a bit to embrace diversity, to, to be tolerant, to um, seek out knowledge, to be a charitable group. That's the, uh, that's the other thing about cosplay. We can raise money. I think at the Bell County Comic Con, we raised about $300 uh, for charity. So yeah, it's, you know, it, we're getting there and our core team works on new ideas every day. And so, cool. so I'll, I'll, turn, I'll turn it back over to you, CJ. Cool, well, thank you very much. And the next we're gonna talk to is Cassie. Cassie, would you mind sharing how you got started on your journey with cosplaying? 
Yeah, uh, definitely. Well, um, I kind of, this isn't really cosplay, but it's kind of what got me into it. And I was always a closet nerd in like middle school, junior high, high school. And, but I was also in beauty pageants and I did beauty pageants from when I was 10 months old until I was 19, I think was when I did my last beauty pageant. And so I always loved competing. I always loved all the makeup and the hair and all that fun stuff. And so when I aged out of the pageants that I used to do, I was like, what's something else I could do that's around the same level? And uh, I started looking into Comic-Cons because I'd always wanted to go to one. And I noticed that Tom Felton from Harry Potter was going to be at uh, Dallas Fan Days. And I was like, oh, let's go to Fan Days. And uh, me and my mom and dad all got together and went to fan days and I saw all these people cosplaying and I was like, I wonder what this is. And I wasn't quite sure what it was. And so I started asking people and I went to the cosplay contest and I went to the cosplayers booths and talked to them and I really got interested and I was like, well, I'll, let's try and make something. So when we got back home, we noticed that, um, this is when fan days still did in October and a February. And so we knew that one was coming up in February and uh, we started trying to come up with a cosplay. And my very first cosplay was the corpse bride from Tim Burton's movie, the corpse bride. And I went to my local Goodwill because this is before I really, I knew how to sew, but not to that extent. Like I had made pajama pants and a skirt in my past of sewing. And that was about it. So, so you're ahead of me it's all good yeah. so I was like uh I'm not gonna try and make a wedding dress so I went to my local Goodwill and bought you know one of the big 80s poofy wedding dresses and stuff and just modified it cut the whole top off and made it into a halter top and a corset and cut the zipper out and did the spray paint on it to make it have the little swirls like hers and I'd already kind of done makeup before. I hadn't gone to makeup school yet, but I'd done makeup in the past. And so I did some research on how to do body paint and I painted myself all blue, just like her and did the makeup and everything. And so when, how long uh, were you blue for? How many uh, days afterwards? <laughs> I, pr I, yeah, I would say the hotel room was a mess. It came off easily, <laughs> but the, but the shower was a mess. And, and I remember my dad, because my dad, he's into this stuff, but he wasn't quite sure how something like the corpse bride would take, you know, how people would react to it. And so the whole way to the convention, I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's going to know who I am. This is embarrassing. I don't know what's going to happen. And I was like so scared because I was like, nobody's going to know who the corpse bride is. That's just embarrassing. I walked in and I think I was five feet past the where you pick up your wristband and people were like oh my god it's the corpse bride and I'm like oh my god people know who this is <laughs> That's awesome. I, was like, I was like this is so weird I was like people know who I am and I was getting stopped and people like kids running up to me I've never seen the corpse bride in person but I'm like people know who this is like I thought I was the only one who would know what I was and that really is what got me kind of roped into it is because I was like wow you can really cosplay almost anything because there were people walking around as characters I never heard of and people were flocking around I'm like oh my god you're my favorite character and I'm like who is that like <laughs> like there you can dress as the most obscure character and I promise you at least 10 people will know exactly who you are because everybody is so the universe is so big in that type of universe so that's really what got me into it. I will admit, it is intimidating going to your first one. Um, oh, the first yes. ones I went to, I was just like, um, what are we doing? <laughs> exactly. And I, I do that with a lot of my cosplays that are more obscure cosplays. I'm like, is anybody going to know who I am? And sure enough, tons of people know who I am. And I'm honestly surprised every single time. I'm like, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we're going to move on to Will. Will, how did your journey start? Um, that's, that's kind of funny because uh, you know I am I, you know, I do cosplay the, uh, the alien from the film Aliens. That was very that was the first film I ever saw that gave me a nightmare, and so I guess that, that sticks in your psyche. But um, 
I, will, I love doing the Halloween show. Every Halloween, I do a free show. This would be my 22nd year. Um, and so that kind of got the ball rolling. I like doing set designs, uh, costuming, of course. Um, but in 1992, I started um, my, uh, my alien collection. I founded the East Texas Hive, and I have the largest alien collection in Texas. And one day I came across the, the alien suit from the film. Now it's a kit you have to make, so the suit I did make, but it was just a prop. It was just set in the corner of my, uh, my room. And cause I've never thought I would have an alien suit. So it was a prop. And it was about 60% complete. I was missing some parts. And then um, I don't know what happened, but six years ago, um, my daughter and I, we decided to go to uh, Fan Expo. Um, we've been watching a lot of sci-fi shows about cosplay. She didn't do watch a lot of YouTube videos about cosplay. And I, I was a very bad introvert back then. So I was really reluctant to go, but I did anyways. I made the journey to Fan Expo and we threw some costumes together real quick um, and, uh, to, and we just went. And I looked around and like Cash said, the diversity and the people that I saw, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. And you know, what was funny, what the funny story is, uh, we checked into a hotel room and I see people with carts and carts with bins <laughs> and stuff and sewing machines and microwaves stacked on there. And I'm going, these people are crazy. Now, now, now go, now, jump ahead now to where I am right now. I'm that crazy person and I wouldn't have it any other way. The, the cosplay community is just the best, um, the best people you can ever find out there. So that's what my journey was. I, I took that first step and it was a scary step. And uh, my life has changed. I mean, I had to buy a larger vehicle to carry all my stuff. I mean, that's how, you know, that's how far people get into the stuff. And I wouldn't have it any other way. The cosplay community as a whole are very accepting. Um, you can come in however you are and they will love you and they will accept you and they will take you as you are. And that's one of the things I love about it. It is yeah. intimidating going to your first con, but it is a blast. You're going to have like the Comic-Con hangover is what I call it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> where, oh, Lord, yeah. where you're just like, your head is just like dead zero, <laughs> but you had so much fun and there are a blast to be in. Um, next question we're going to talk about is what do you guys, um, now that into your journeys, what keeps you doing it time after time after time? I mean, right now we're a little bit shy because of what's going on around us in the world. Um, I try not to mention it because I like to keep these timeless, but it's kind of an obvious one. When Comic Con, they're getting canceled left and right. Yeah. But what does keep you here on a normal, regular, everyday basis? We'll start with Will. The fans, um, definitely the fans. Um, I'm I'm fortunate enough, just like a, a the other guests here, where um, I get invited as a guest now, and I can have a booth and set up. Um, because in the past, I would walk, I would have to walk around the conventions, which is very difficult to do because number one. I can walk 10 feet, I get stopped for 10 minutes for pictures. And walk 10 more feet, I get stopped for 10 minutes for pictures. And so now it's great to have the people come to me. And uh, the suit gets, it does get hot, especially if you don't move around and there's not much, there's not been much ventilation. So you, I'm usually in for about four hours. But, you know, like with the Geek Con, the flow of people was so amazing and the enthusiasm that they came out. And they're like, oh my God, he's an alien, that's a picture. I was in the suit for six and a half hours and I loved every minute of it. My back was hurting. You know, um, I was, I probably lost a pound or two of sweating. You know, that does happen sometimes in these suits, um, but it was worth it. I mean, the feedback that I get from the audience is, I mean, from the people uh, is just amazing. And that's what drives me. That's what keeps me going. It is, you know, the, the night before when I'm packing up and I'm, I'm painting the suit and repairing it, you kind of get that, I get that little um, con, pre-con lull where I'm like, Duh. I'm like, you know, I got to drag all this stuff in there. I got to set up, blah, blah, blah. But once I pull up to the convention area, I mean, right into the parking lot, the adrenaline kicks in. And once that adrenaline kicks in, I know I still love what I'm doing. If I ever pull up into a parking lot and that adrenaline is not there, I know it's time to stop doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm just doing it because I have to do it, not because I want to do it. But like I said, the fans, the people that come to the conventions uh, that follow me on my web website, on YouTube, I do it for them. Okay, Cassie? Uh, I have to agree. It is the fans. I mean, I've had, I mean, I went from, you know, freaking out that first con as the court fraud, hoping people would know who I was to actually people like DMing me, PMing me, private messaging, you know, anything like that. You need to cosplay this, please cosplay this. You know, I'd love to see you cosplay like people telling me what they, what they would like to see. And I'm pretty sure I've gotten about 10 different people. I'm trying to remember the name of the girl 
from Princess and the Frog, the blonde, spoiled one. I could not remember her name, but I've had, <laughs> I've had about 10 people in the last two months tell me I need to cosplay her because they said I look so much like her. And I'm like, I love her character, but I have no idea how I'd make any of those costumes right now. <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, it's, it's a constant people like Snow White. I had never even planned to cosplay Snow White in all honesty. Like she was like far down on my list because I have a list of about 40 or 50 cosplays yeah. that are like dream cosplays. And she, she's pretty far down, but so many people, I think it was last year when I debuted my first version of Snow White, which was a store-bought from Spirit because so many people were going, you need to be Snow White. I want to see you as Snow White. So I was like, you know what? It was the week after Halloween. Spirit, everything was like 80% off. I was like, I'll go buy a costume. And so I went and bought a Snow White. And that store-bought Snow White was one of my most liked posts, like, by far. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, okay. And so I decided, I was like, well, since this store-bought Snow White isn't my favorite, I'm just going to make a Snow White since apparently it's so popular. And sure enough, I made a Snow White, and now it's, like, one of the most popular cosplays, most requested ones I have. And so people just constantly, you know, telling me these cosplays they would like me to do and like Will said the adrenaline that kicks in every single time and no matter what no matter if I'm a guest no matter if I know I'm going to be competing that day it's always like oh my gosh I hope people come to my table oh my gosh I hope people know who I am you know just stuff like that and it really like he said also with you know you get so into it when you have a booth that you don't even realize how long you're wearing your costume and I was Hawk Girl at Fan Expo last year, and those wings weighed a good thirty-five or so pounds. I mean, they were they weren't they were huge. Per, yeah, they they weren't heavy per se, but they were heavy. Mm -hmm. And so I had these uh, belts. I actually made a harness out of men's leather belts, and that's how my harness was under my corset and my costume and stuff. And I'm pretty sure I wore that costume from opening to almost close without taking them off for a break. And when I decided to tap out, it was probably about an hour before close. And I was like, you know what? Eh, I think I'm going to tap out and just go ahead and go to the room. And sure enough, I had the biggest bruises everywhere. Yep. But I never was really noticing it because I was so enthralled with people coming to the table and, you know, the just how everybody was reacting and stuff to the costume and my pictures that I had on my table. And so, I mean, it's really just what keeps it going. And even though I was hurting and had bruises because of how much the fans loved everything that I'd done, you bet I'm going to make another one that probably gives me bruises because, <laughs> <laughs> because of the reaction it gets and stuff. So it's, it's just a lot of fun. And honestly, not just the reaction, I just love doing it in general, because I've always been the type to do crazy makeup or crazy wigs or, you know, just stuff like that in general, and so I'm at, I'm planning a lot of cosplays for, of course, later this year, but they're more simple along the lines of cosplay, but they're more for the Halloween parties around here in Orlando and stuff, but those are, I'm excited to do those and those are as simple as jeans and a t-shirt and a hat for the cosplay and I mean it's just exciting to get to make something new. Right um we have a few minutes left um for those listening hopefully I can con them into maybe another session here shortly <clears throat> um but we literally have less than five minutes so Paul if you can knock it down to about three um that way everybody can have a chance to explain where people can find them online and then we will continue to talk. Understood, Commander. Well, it's obviously the fans, but it's the fan reaction, I think, that's the most, what they get out of it. And seeing that either in person at the conventions or reactions to our Mimisodes, uh, plus the core team I work with, all of the cosplayers, you know, you, Will, you know, Sophia, Terry Tarkenton, who's our Admiral, it, Ensign Logan, they all, we all work as a team and we all give each other feedback and I think and then I hear from them what the reactions of their fan base are to to our cosplays it's 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 very fulfilling and and actually just being on the ground at the conventions is probably 
my most favorite part. That's what keeps me going. And it's a creative outlet. And I like working in teams. So I think I've got the best team right now around me. You know, CJ, you, Will, oh my God, Will, you have been the biggest help. You went, you say you were an That's introvert. That's props man over there. <laughs> Will, and Will went from being an introvert to directing a lot of these meme episodes. Some of my favorite scenes he directed with uh, these two young uh, cosplayers. I think it's uh, Lieutenant Johnson and, and this one uh, other young lady who played an ensign. That was like one of, that was gold and that was his direction. And uh, I wish we had filmed that as well as taking the photos. You know, Sophia Cast, who's our expert seamstress in helping with uniform design and choices and colors and some of the legal issues we have to deal with. And um, CJ, your editing, I mean, your writing skills have been invaluable, kind of focused me a lot. So yeah, that's what keeps me going. Awesome. It's, it's okay. the team, is the team. It's, it's all about the team. Awesome. Um, okay, Paul, where can they find you online? Oh, uh, Star Trek Pathfinder or at ST. P A T H F I N D E R at ST Pathfinder across predominantly on Facebook because that's where we're able to put the meme episodes on Star Trek Fat Star Trek Pathfinder like page. And then we're also on Instagram as well as Twitter. Awesome. Cassie, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at Mermaid Cosplay at M A oh God, M E R M E R M A I D underscore. C O S P L A Y 95 underscore. Awesome. I can't well, spell can I when I'm put under pressure. <laughs> Will, where can they find you? Um, Will the Alien Cosplay on Facebook. That's W I L space D apostrophe A L I E N space C O S P L A Y. And on YouTube, Will the Alien, uh, same thing, W I L space D apostrophe L A L I E N. And uh, you're also on Instagram as well. Yes, but I haven't really. I've been lacking, slacking there. We're so. trying. We're, <laughs> We're trying, trying to get it. Okay, yeah. thank you guys so much for joining me today. It was oh, an absolute thanks. pleasure and an absolute joy. No, thank you. We'll have to try it again sometime, but we really appreciate you. And thank you guys for joining us today with The Journey is Real. We talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of the hearts. I'm CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com. Until next time.